Hi there, Guy from Bugs and Stuff here. In this video, we're going to look at a spider that may start to become a common sight around the houses of the UK. Commonly called the grey house spider, Badumna longinqua is native to eastern Australia, but has been accidentally introduced to New Zealand, the USA, Hawaii, Mexico, Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, Argentina, South Africa, Germany, Holland, Japan, and now the UK. The first UK records of its appearance date from around 2021 and it piqued my interest as those first records were from the northeast, not far from where I live. In recent years, sightings have increased and it's now been recorded in Nottinghamshire, Plymouth, Sussex, Cornwall, Newcastle, Sunderland and Neath. With such a wide distribution, this spider may already be in your own garden, but remains undetected. Initial sightings were in and around garden centres, suggesting that they came in on plants, but we will never know their true form of entry into the UK. Surprisingly, despite being from Australia, they tolerate our harsh UK winters, so it looks like they're here to stay. So, are they already in your garden? Let's look at how to identify them and their webs compared to the resident UK species. In terms of size, they're a decent sized spider compared to most UK species. Females reach around 15 millimetres in body length, but males are smaller. They're often mistaken for a common UK spider that lives in similar conditions, the lace web spiders of the genus Amorobius. They're larger than our native Amorobius, but have a similar body shape and do make similar style webs, although much larger and more obvious when you know what you're looking for. Both Bedumna and Amorobius don't use sticky web to capture their prey. Instead, they build what is known as cribellet silk. Cribellet silk is produced from numerous tiny silk glands underneath a specialised spinning organ called the cribellum. Cribellet spiders also possess a row of tooth bristles, the calamistrum, on the second to last segment of the fourth leg. They use this to comb the silk into a wool-like structure which snags their prey in the fine silk rather than in glue. They also build their distinctive webs in the same areas as amorobius, such as in windowsills and door frames. The main difference between the native Amorobius webs and the Benumna webs are their size. Being a larger spider than Amorobius, they also build larger webs. These photographs demonstrate the differences clearly. The Amorobius web is rather delicate and small, while the Benumna web covers a much larger area and looks more white in colour. Another main difference is that most Amorobius web cling to the wall or window surface, while Benumna webs can span open spaces more like an orb web. So where could I find these spiders, as I still hadn't seen one for myself? After a quick search for images on the British Spider Identification Facebook group, I quickly discovered that there was a healthy population very close to where I live, and after sending out a few private messages to members that had posted photos, I soon found myself in the garden of a very helpful woman called Jodie, who was more than happy to let me photograph and film them during last summer. On arrival and seeing the webs, it was obvious straight away this wasn't your typical Amorobius lace web. Look at how dense and white the web is, and also how the silk spans open distances between objects. Very different to our UK spiders. Jody described the webs as cargo nets, and I think that's a pretty good description. Looking down the line of gardens in her street, I could see several of these large impressive webs on fences, on bird tables, on walls and emerging from disused bird boxes. Definitely a healthy population. The spider is rarely seen during the day and builds itself a tubular retreat in one corner of the web in a sheltered position, as you can see here. We tried unsuccessfully to entice the spider out by tickling the web and resorted to using a small stick to get the spider out for filming. And over the following few days, Jody sent me lots of videos of webs, juveniles, adult males actively attacking prey during the day, and even an egg sac inside one of the bird boxes.
To find out more about this newcomer, I had a chat with long-term friend Richard Gallen, council member from the British Arachnological Society. So, Richard, hi. Uh, I don't know if you want to start with just uh, introducing yourself and your role in uh, British spiders and spiders in general, really. Okay. Cheers, Guy. Uh, yeah, I'm Richard Gallen, so I'm a council member of the British Arachnological Society. Um, my role in the society is National Spider Recording Scheme lead, so essentially I collate all the records that come in from recorders across Britain and we maintain the spider recording scheme, uh, which helps understand conservation and distribution of British spiders. Uh, quite an interesting role, really. Uh, so, yeah, it's nice to see what's happening. And I know Guy's got some interest, interesting questions today about a species that's fairly recently arrived in Britain. Yeah, thanks for that. So when, personally, when did you first become aware of this spider? Uh, it's probably about two or three years ago. I'd, I'd sort of seen rumours of it online and you sort of hear things on the grapevine that, oh, there's this odd spider that's turning up in people's gardens and you just think, oh, well, it's pr probably just something that's been imported one-off thing in a yeah. garden centre or something. So you tend not to pay too much notice about it. But then as these records start piling in, you start to think, oh, hang on a minute, something something's happening here. <laughs> yeah. So when when how do you think it has arrived in the UK then? Uh, well, globally it's got quite an interesting distribution. So yeah. originally it were, its native distribution is eastern Australia in the temperate parts of eastern Australia, mm -hmm. and it, it seems to have established in New Zealand quite a while back. Uh, so from there it's starts to radiate around the, the world, but only in the temperate zone. So you don't find it in the tropics and. Obviously, the high Arctic areas you don't find it, so it's turned. But is in... Eastern Australia not considered really hot and humid? Yeah, not by Australian standards. So it, right. yeah. it's not in the sort of Queensland tropical rainforest belt or the central part of Australia. So it's yeah. Yeah. it's in that more temperate Victoria region of Australia that has quite cold winters. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. Can probably... you get down to sort of two degrees, three degrees in nighttime? Easy. Yeah, so, uh, so it's turned up in places like Uruguay, uh, South Africa, just on along the southern coast there, uh, California, Hawaii. So it's popping up all over the world, and it, it's it's obviously an extremely good hitchhiker traveling around with human imports. So I don't know shipping containers, things like that, uh, products that are being bulk shipped across the world. I think it's things like wood. Could be uh, difficult to say. Uh, or plants, maybe. Could be could be plants as well. It, certainly in UK, it's turned up in garden centres quite regularly. So, and because it's in Europe, I suppose it's everybody assumes it's just came from Australia, but it's probably came from Europe because that's yeah. Like the Actually, step, it's not that it? it's not that well established in Europe. It, I think right. it's in a, a few hot houses in I don't know Germany, Netherlands, that sort of region it's not right. widespread throughout europe yet but we seem to have got it from different sources so there's some that have obviously turned up in garden centers in the uk that have probably come in on plants from holland in the horticultural trade but yeah. there's others other populations that have sprung up often near the coast so they could be coming in on private boats uh, yachts whatever yeah but, but the thing is it's a spider many spiders are they're extremely good at hitchhiking, so they'll they'll crawl into some cargo, sit there. They don't have to eat for months on end if they're well fed. You only need one female that's already been mated. Yeah. And she gets to a new part of the world. She's mated, she'll drop an egg sack, and then that starts the whole population off. So were the first records further south in England, though? Than the they're not. Strangely enough, the, the first records are from Washington in Sort of oh, the England. original records are from yeah. the so wow. just sporadic little records, and it's it started. I think the next record then was in Plymouth. So right, it's, it's clearly it's got to be all the way down the, the length of England, hasn't it? Not yeah. necessarily. No, there could be two separate points of introduction. Right. Yeah. So because it's quite a big spider, and it's quite obvious. So you just thought, well, people are going to realise they've seen this thing. 
So it's peculiar that it's just popping up in spots. And that, that sort of agrees with the sort of species that's just been transported and forming yeah. little isolated populations throughout the countries. It's that establishment phase of a essentially an invasive species. So you don't see it everywhere at once, but then suddenly it starts radiating out from these points of introduction yeah. and eventually it'll be all over the country. <laughs> Uh, so, because uh, the North East is not exactly known for being a, a warm area, is it? I could have expected down Southampton, Plymouth, coastal, sort of southern England, where it's a little bit warmer. Mm. But in the North East. So, that, so we're, what we're saying is because we think they maybe live two years. So maturing in the, in the start of the second year, maybe, and then yeah. going on to produce. But so they can definitely survive a North East winter then. Yeah. That, that is interesting because you, logic would say, well, surely something that's from Australia, which I suppose the climate is m more mild than a UK winter, for instance, and Newcastle region, northeast, probably one of the coldest parts of England, surely. Yeah. But that suggests that if it can persist and survive there, it's going to be able to live throughout Britain without any problem. Uh, yeah. It's what what we'd term a synanthropic spider. So these right. are spiders that associate with human habitation. Yeah. You find them in gardens, around houses. They seem to particularly like metal fences and that sort of thing, street yeah. lamps. And when you think about it, a street lamp is essentially a an artificially warmed habitat. So if we get, yeah. a, I don't know, a minus 10 winter, if that thing's sat cosy next to the light lamp, light bulb in a, a street lamp, it's going to be able to ride out those extinction events with the the cold temperatures. So yeah, yeah. I think with it living around houses, it's it's here to stay. Really, there's no way it's going to get knocked out by a, a twenty ten winter, for instance. Yeah. So that the next question I would ask then would it have a negative effect on the our British stuff? Yeah, it's difficult to say because in a lot of the places in the world where it's been introduced to it, it is essentially tied to human habitation. So it's not getting out into those natural ecosystems and surviving there. And a lot of our rare species are associated with original natural ecosystems. They don't live in your back garden, for instance. Yeah. So it, it, it's a strange thing because a lot of our house and gardens, well, generally our house spider type things that live cl close to us aren't native anyway. They've they've travelled along with us around the globe. So you think of those daddy long legs spiders, those falcons. Yeah. That they're not a UK native. They they just happen to like living in the same sort of buildings. Yeah, I remember twenty years ago uh, being in London. Uh, and basically seen lots of them in my brother's house down in London and like it was a surprise to me because I'd never really seen them 20 years mm. ago and now 20 years later up here they're everywhere yeah so is it that similar thing so that's probably what we're going to see with Badumna long inquiry it's going to have, have this lag phase they call it when a species becomes established it's going to start popping up in different areas as people are moving specimens around by accident and then eventually it's just going to be in everybody's garden and we're all going to go, oh, well, we all know it yeah, now. It's, yeah. it's there. But there, there is some evidence it might be ousting some of the spiders that currently live in our gardens. There's things like Amarobius similis that's another cribellate spider, which is a native, but it's very common on large lap fences and stuff. And it, it lives in essentially the same ecological niche. Yeah, so yeah. There's a potential that... The Dumna might replace it. Because that's what people's got to look out for, basically, if they want to find it, isn't it? It's a very similar web, but also yeah. it's completely different. It's much bigger, as we've seen by the photographs, much more dense and uh, described as a cargo net type of web yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Really impressive. And if if it does really stand out, maybe not to the average uh, observer, but once you look around your garden and you see these mm. webs, when you spot it, when I first spotted it in that Washington site, it was so obvious it was something different. It yeah. was really strikingly bright white web and really three, four times bigger than the, the Amarobius. Yeah. So Amarobius webs are essentially flat against the surface. They're, yeah. they're, they don't generally stick out into yeah. the mirror at all, but this, these Badumna webs are, are almost like an orb web, but not quite. They, yeah. 
the, yeah, span an open space. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the stretch across into midair and essentially a, a single plane of a web. Yeah. Somebody's described it as looking a bit like laddered tights. It's got that yeah. ladder pattern to it. Yeah, so, that's yeah, quite I think, distinctive. Yeah, I think if you hadn't seen it before and suddenly you see it, you'd be, oh, that's that's a bit odd. What, what's going on there? Yeah. But the, the other issue with Bedumna is it's quite nocturnal as well, so you're very rarely going to see it in the day, even though it's quite a big spider. Yeah. So unless you're out there at night with a torch, you're not going to see the actual spider, and it... It could yeah. go hidden for a long time, really. <laughs> yeah, it's the same with the the native ones, isn't it? So, despite making the similar type of web as our Amorobius, it's is how closely related is it to that? Uh, it's not really. Yeah, well, I suppose in that it's a spider, but yeah, yeah it's, it's a totally separate family. So it's in the Decidae family, which essentially that's the the only representative of that family in Britain that's living large. And the Decidae are quite interesting in that. Some of them are maritime spiders, so in yeah. South Africa you get some that live below high tide and they, they make little, I don't know, silk cells under rocks and essentially have these huge jaws and chelicerae and fangs that eat marine yeah. life, really. So it's quite an interesting thing, but they, they seem to be mainly sort of southern hemisphere, so I don't know, yeah. I guess it's suddenly found a new niche in the northern hemisphere and is... Is about to take over. <laughs> yeah, so there's quite a lot of Bedumna though, isn't there, in the genus? So what what prevents the other ones doing yeah, a similar sort of thing? I think it, it's probably because it's synanthropic. So uh, because it can tolerate and actually thrive in a man-made environment mm. when it's moved from, say, I don't know, let, let's assume it's come from New Zealand, it, in a, I don't know, box of tree fern roots or something like that, I don't know, tree fern stems, could well have just hitched on a, a piece of equipment that's been brought over or a side of a ship. It's got here, and it, it's, there's no difference in habitat from where it's been living. It's, it's got, yeah. oh, right, metal yeah. fence works. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. It's, it's not like it's been challenged by being taken to a completely different climatic yes. zone or a having to live in a different environment. So, for instance, if, if you were to take possibly some of the other Bedumna species that are not so invasive and transport them to UK, they'd probably just not survive because yeah. they haven't got that synanthropic invasive tem tendency. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So the, the question everyone's going to ask, obviously, is it's Australian, isn't it? It's uh, Surely it's deadly poisonous. But I'm assuming nobody really knows what the venom's like. Yeah. The assumption is it's completely harmless to Yeah, I, to I've certainly not heard of any body being bitten, or if they have, they haven't made a song and dance about it, which sort of speaks volumes. It, it's a big spider. I'm sure it probably could punch your skin, but quite a lot of British spiders can do that. And I've been bitten by all web spiders in the past, and it's literally two little pin pricks in your finger and yeah. you don't you, they don't necessarily inject venom so they're not yeah. going to always inject venom they, they they just want you to let go <laughs> if you pick them up so yeah i'd treat it with respect but it's not a very aggressive spider it's not like some of spiders no, no, you can i've handled that one as you've seen yeah. and, uh, basically they're not they're not defensive at all really yeah. quite well, unless you grabbed one and physically held it against your skin and yeah. made it feel that it was going to get squashed. It's not going to bite you. Yeah. That's the same with black widows and everything, really, isn't it? Mm. So, yeah. So what about other invasive arachnids? Then? I know, like, I do a lot of school workshops and all the teachers are quite surprised when I tell them there's, there's been scorpions in the UK for, like, 150-odd years. Yep. I don't think many people know that. So yeah. I think a lot of these things just go unnoticed because... They are nocturnal, and people tend not yeah. to go out looking for invertebrates at night in UK, I suppose, with the exception of moth moth people. But when you're in the tropics, actual nocturnal surveying is what you do because yeah. it's a hard time finding anything in the day sometimes in the tropics. But for some reason, we never do it in UK, so we probably underestimate what's out there, really. Mm -hmm. so if you're walking around a city at night with a torch, you're probably... Can see lots of different spiders that have come into Britain. For instance, that uh, green fang spider, the Sugestria florentina. Yeah, that's a that's another synanthropic thing that's come from southern Europe. 
and you can find that yeah. in good numbers on the server. So essentially, it's not, it's nothing new, is it, for something to turn up? All right, I think that that pretty much uh, answers all the questions. Thanks for your time, and uh, yeah, yeah. thanks very much for for oh. answering all everyone's questions. Yeah, no problem, guy. Uh, obviously, if anyone finds these things, do let us know because uh, on our record, we've got a, a bespoke arachnological society recording form where you can enter your record of Badumna or any spider for that matter in Britain. Yeah, because the, the, the recording of spiders is, you know, it's a pretty important thing, isn't it? To, mm. to keep records up to date and that's part of your main main job, isn't it? Yep. So obviously those records will get verified by people to check that their right, the ID is correct. And if you've got a photo, that helps enormously. Yeah. And unless we've got the records, we can't really map the changes in spider populations in Britain and how these new arrive, arriving spiders are establishing so it's good to know at what point in time this expansion suddenly happened and yeah. the records are all spread out across the internet and on facebook groups and they don't get used essentially they're just yeah. static so put them on the into the spider recording scheme and then they'll be there forever and can be used for conservation work in future yeah obviously i'll add all them links to the to the to the uh, description in the video. All right, thanks very much. Nice to see you again. Yep, cheers, guy. So there you have it. Get out there this spring and summer and check those garden spider webs. Has the grey house spider made its way into your garden yet?